Now let's look at what magnetic flux is. Magnetic flux phi b is b dot a, where the b is the magnetic field and the a is the area of the wire loop. This is called a dot product or a scalar product, kind of like the cross product. The dot product is another way to multiply two vectors. A dot product equals to the magnitude of one vector times the magnitude of the other vector times cosine the angle between the two vectors. We have used the dot product before. Do you remember when we used one vector times another times cosine the angle between the two? It's work. The work done by a force equals the force times the displacement times the cosine the angle between the two. So work is also a dot product. It is a force dot displacement. The result of a dot product is a scalar. That's why it is also called a scalar product. Work is a scalar. Magnetic flux is also a scalar. Magnetic flux is kind of like the number of magnetic field lines going through a wire loop. For example, let's say we have a uniform magnetic field going into the paper. And I have a wire loop over here. When the wire loop is like this, there are a certain number of field lines going through this loop. Since flux is B dot A, the stronger the field, the denser the field lines, and therefore the more lines will go through the loop which leads to larger flux. And the larger the area of the loop, the more the lines going through the loop, and therefore the larger the flux is. The angle matters too. If I rotate the loop this way, do I get more, fewer, or the same number of field lines going through the loop? I would get fewer lines through the loop than before. If I make the loop like this, how many field lines would go through the loop? Zero. The field lines would just go next to the loop. None of the field lines would go through the loop. The flux would be zero. Usually, area is a scalar, but here, area is a vector, and we use its normal vector for the direction of the area. Normal means perpendicular, so a normal vector means it's a vector that is perpendicular to the plane of the loop. A normal vector is what mathematicians use to represent the orientation of a plane. Of course, for any plane or any wire loop, there are two normal vectors, one going this way, and one going the other way. Sometimes a problem would specify which normal vector to use. Sometimes we get to choose which normal vector to use. For example, if the wire loop is like this, I can choose the normal vector going into the paper. So B and the A are in the same direction. The angle between B and A would be 0 degrees, and the cosine 0 degrees is 1. However, I can also choose to use the normal vector that goes out of the paper. So B and A are in opposite directions. The angle between B and A would be 180 degrees, and the cosine 180 is negative 1. This means that we may end with a positive flux or a negative flux depending on which normal vector we choose, and that's okay. If the wire loop is like this, the normal vector can either go this way or that way. In either case, the angle between B and the A would be 90 degrees, and the cosine 90 degrees is zero, no flux, which is consistent with our observation that no field lines are going through the loop. Most of the time, the problems we see involve wire loops in this kind of orientation, when it is convenient for us to just use 1 for the cosine part, and the flux would just be b times a. Occasionally, the loop is like this, so it is obvious that there is no flux. In the rare case when the loop is slanted, 
we would usually be given an angle to use. The unit for magnetic flux, B dot A, is Tesla times meter squared. So the unit is Tesla times meter squared, and it gets a special name, Weber. For example, let's say this wire loop is circular with a radius 0.1 meter, and the magnetic field is 0.02 teslas. Find the magnetic flux through this wire loop. It is just a B times A, so it is a magnetic field 0 0.02 times the area of the circle pi r squared. So we get 6.28 times 10 to the negative fourth, and the unit will be Weber's.